Mark Shine for the lighter. So I'm as well feel in the light to shave It's uh, lots of light with Viro Dizunga Hunt. A Bengish as to stand up, stand up for Jesus. And those like for Sto, they were out Shreve, they we prayed how they prayed in and the via beaten revival. The the ye integrated via in the state sharing school. But anyways, and I music ride tam my morada, I music ride and I yink read tam form and I date and beat sign of old dot us they the the current drasha the hadn't current Things what the rush machine they they code or they ask the young ram and ram and things who a kick has in a haunt and that machine down and that writes in a arm off and and do that for the crank and and start. Or by jemand früh am na what 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 for a word was given to the to the jemand to the mansion? I said stand up, stand up for Jesus. So things. That's how I remember the story in a way. So, but the reason what we saw stone for them here, that one of what they hear apply ans that for ans upon apply that. But we run stone down that we fear what's going on. And you know, I think on that we can show the thing in life, and we said, Mike, well, now what we're doing here, man. Well, we will not give up. We will forwards, forwards, for them here in Stone. And met am going. I yet met us. That on that light, neither my God so dear so so. You know that as so as we that them here in Northern, we Northern no God going, and am no am going. There is we on the cross finger down, and them here. Nay, here, my God, so the dark shine for the light up. So, on the ondacht, I will be to ever read of the Bekonde Yeshech from David and Goliath in the Old Testament, and Yishta Samuel 17. And I say Bekonde Yeshech, David and Goliath, I quite an under Zinder Shovis and Steinbach is under. And uh, when you say here, that's why that that you shake what as most of all betalt water. You know the story of David and Goliath. How David he killed Goliath. You know the giant. So I can't even ever read it from the Yeshicht. Where are you going to find the clue? Where are you going to find the answer to find? And we sind hier in 1. Samuel 17 und wir gleichen das Geschicht, wir denken an, wo wir gleichen zu hier, wo Gaudet der Gewerner. Gaudet der Gewerner auf dem Eng. Und wenn wir in der Welt nachkicken, wir sind ja viel schleichtet. Viel schleichtet wird an die Schaufe. Und wir wollen in der Welt, wo das alles schaufe. Aber wie weit haben wir auf den Eng, wo das Gaudet der Gewerner? Wenn wir in Offenbarung nach dem Kicker tun, Offenbarung all Vers 15, Revelation 11, 15, redet von der sevende Engel, der redet sie in der Posaun, Schale, er blieb seine Trumpet. Und wie eine große Stämme im Himmel, das sagt der Gewerner, The kingdoms of this world, the Reichtum, nicht der Reichtum, in other words, the kingdoms. That's in all of your word, the kingdoms of the Lord, and of his Christ. None of his and he shall reign forever and ever. Heiwat regir, he will reign. So we wait about it, Yeshicht, when we know the ending of the story. You know, God, what you vanna, to go to what you vanna up and ang. And that's what we gleich to hear, and that's what it reichs, that's what it soll sound, that a go to soll you vanna. And so said, look, I'm in this world, I'm in this world, I'm in this world. And here, in this world, you see from David and Goliath. So said, look, you know, the world of God, the Goliath, he will be in God's own folk, fatter. 
and uh, and they won in a World War II event ever this morning. So I'm going to you a laser here. First Samuel 17. <coughs> So I'm going to hear a word here, ever sought, over anyways, the Geschichte rede here. Read from the Philistines, the Komotop tum Ferta yen Israel, the Komotop the Shoko, like the Shte Shted. The first two is Saul, Saul, how have you done Kenich, and uh, the army, the Komotop. Read from Jose and Mikazik, right in the valley of Elah, and the Philistines read up on the con. So, I mean, I know, I know, boy, I know, con boy, and the Philistines and the Israelites read on the con boy. Mikazik, right, him fatter. And I call him beat Glickness Brooker, we wait a well, we, we had uck battles. Dinge, wo wir mit Kampf verdauen. Schwere Dinge. Da kann man die Gesundheit sein, da kann man ja, someone has to starve us, we miss someone, we have health issues, and er redet von verschiedenen Dinge, redet wie von du hängen in der Kirche. Dinge, wo schwer sind. Und wo kommen wir durch? Und das ist ein bisschen so stiff. We have a battle to fight. Wir haben, wir machen durch Somehow, der ich komme. In vierten Fars red von, and there went out a champion to come, this Grote Mon, and the Philistines, Goliath, he's enormous, and that's actually his height was six cubits in a span, so I've been ever named so huge. Grote Mon, we wrote. And they found what I broke a day, seen helmet, I've seen cup, and and uh, it says he was armed with a coat of mail. I heard fun, fun uh, metal, blech, nicht blech, anyways, steel, or a, a coat you mark to fun. So the one schwiet what you know, the word I'm nicht schnied, it will say how this is easy in a bit so von Kede you mark of Kovizai, from little chain links, chain links, Kovizai, and bit so start. What have you swore? And 125 pounds, we see in coat, from chain links, you marked. And I heard the armor on his legs. And grow a javelin with a schmita con. And I think the shift will grow this morning, we and will strike the we and what I always drew. And where would ye in this grow to mod fatter? Parsh acht and high stunt and schreift nur die Israelite armies. Warum kommen wir hier ans zu Väter? Ich sehe in Philistin und ihr seid Knechte von Saul. Wähl ein Mann und wir wurden ans zu Väter. Ich bin arm. Ich bin arm wurde Väter. Wer wird ihr werden? Wenn ihr werdet, dann seid wie ihr Knecht. Aber wenn ich ihr werdet, dann Sei je an der Knach. Du brücke nicht alle Väter, bloß einen und einen. Da bin ich zu davon. Verst hin, I defy the armies of Israel this day. How do you say defy in German? Ich weiß nicht. Defy, he redet jen ernt. Jef mi in Mon, und wie wurde zu Väter. Und Saul und alle der Israeliter, der hier deserviert von des Philistine, this giant, and they were angst. The smades, they are angst. The grill, the zik. And this man, ye in arm, and to coma. So that is the yeshik, he's ain't a count. Here's the giant, here's the enemy. And we can't excite the SMB pig licked met the Zoltan. I used to first, pan day what ye in God. Schaffe down, fährte down, and he, he fährt jen ans, his old home. And wo wo we jen am jewerne? Wo wo we jen is old home jewerne? We can't eat in the craft. 
habe nicht Jutans eine Kraft. Jutans selbst, wir sind so als all diese Easter Lieder, wir würden bloß weichern, wir haben nicht Kraft, den Sultan. Aber wie weiter das eine wird kommen, Jesus, ein Heilhaft Johanna, er wird den Sultan, er wird, er wird den Sinn. So in Vers 11, in Vers 12, dann redet von David, kriegt, David, das ist ein bekannter Geschäft. Er kämpft, David, Vers 12, die sehen von einem Öfterthreit, Jesse sehen sehen, er hat acht Sehens. Und das sind alle Mann, und der Deo von Saul, und der älteste drei Sehens von Jesse, die they wieder do in the army, they später met in Saul's in army. So I feel they sent Eliab, the Irsta, Irshiburna, and then Abinadab, and then Shama, the Drada. So these are three else Zains, they wieder all in the army. But I feel I have the youngster. I have enough to young. Over the three, the three else they wieder do in the army. Und David wird wie hei, Vers 15, hei wie dein Wort, wie der Schopfleif. Hei wie der jüngste Jung. Und uh, das ist jedes Mal, dass er davon redet, wenn er in, in Anfang zu sehen schickt, wenn sie reden von David, oh, das ist der Schopfleif. Er ist der Shepherd. In der vierten Kapitel, uh, 1 Samuel 16, Vers 11, du redest noch von, als Samuel kam, er will ein König lesen von Jesse seine Seins. Und du, du wirst all gesagt, jo, darf ich, das ist der Bideschop. Und der kommt nicht durch, als Samuel kommt, um ein König lesen von der Jungs. Darf ich, wie nicht mal gekommen, er will ah, bloß der Jüngste. Aber wie weiter er war, darf ich gewählt und den hier kenne ich sein. Aber er war bloß die Seine aus, oh, ich bloß der Jüngste wird wie der Schopf aus. Anyways, so Vers 16, Kapitel 17, Vers 16, und die Philistine drew near, morning and evening, so they come alle Tag, Marion und so Owens, und er kam Ferdinand und sagt, jeff mir ein Mann, wie wurde er top Vierter? Vierte ich dir, dein Herr Gott. Und Vers 17 lesen wir von, uh, wo David kam. Vers 17. Und Jesse sehr zu sehen, sehen David, nimmt für deine Breiter, wird Karn, und Tien Braut, und Gott hat nur den Kampf, wo sie fährte da. Ich habe für deine Breiter, und ich sage, wo Kais, Tien Kais, ich habe nur den Kapitän, und ich gucke mal, wo der Breiter da ist. Und bring me, uh, bring me news back, you know, was sie haben zu sein. So, darf ich denken, du hast eine Balance, zum Dauern, was ich muss. You know, sie in der Breite, der wird in der Armee, aber er bleibt wieder schob, und nun wieder wird auch nicht von zu Dauern, er wird Balance, dort zu Dauern, was ich muss. Und ich glaube, dort ist A good lesson here from David. You wait to what I were kenich, but you wait to I died what you must you don't. I died what you must you don't. He had a willing, a willingness to serve. A willingness to serve. And when we thank of this Yeshicht and what we can do to Lira, did us import a willingness to serve. Wir können es leicht bloß, just to sit back and let others serve, bloß zu sein bleiben und nicht unter die Arbeit tun. Und wir sehen das besonders in der Kirche, und wir können es so, dass es sind bloß ein paar Menschen, die tun die meisten Arbeit. Aber wir wollen, wir dienen den Courage, you know, wenn du sagst, wenn jeder einer kann mithalten, wer wird das tun, wer wird das tun. Matt Hopper, so as we can. Here can think we know that. What can act on? We met God's in a craft. 
Cavi Don, what daughter Felix Adon. And ein yent, ein, ein example as in a, in a familius. Herkanas tot de mutter as tai what the kenga con got leader dat. Over dat as ok de fora as he's the head of the home. And dat as up to the fora tam feragona and the kenga leader. Besonders von Gott. Und ich weiß, ich denke auch, in meiner Mama wird er wird uns, als wir jung werden, sei wird er wird uns die Gebete lehren deide und Bibelfarge, ich bin sicher, taler deide. Aber mein Dad deide auch, ich kauft uns Bible Story Books. Und ich habe viel Bände gelesen, als ich jung werde. Und ich habe viel gelesen von der Chef, bloß durch diese Bible story books for you. There's and verschiedene things that we can do in front of the king, or in the great king. Read Bible stories to your grandchildren. And you know, plus an example. We wait a few and we wonder now what can I do? And when we the the, the Bible on the king and great king a little down, God there to seen what reader. When we entered wood, later down, and I got what all seen put down. I what all there seen wood, later, and we well are uns put down and on the king a later and 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 uh, Ephesians six four, we read it from the forash. The forash and your fathers provoke not your children to wrath. Forash, oyet in a king a nech, oba bring te up. In the nurture and admonition and him heron, but we as forish we hunt and, and job to man the king up upbringing and him heron. And uh, there is one thing what I say here from David, I I will write what I'm down of what I must down, and well we look so so sad. I have a bit gone and, and on the andacht. Well, this is the land that I name it, I'm going to be at Gona. And there isn't so many things that we have to be at Gona. You know, that you be at Gona, plus, oh God, I help him at this and help him at that. Yo, we will, and I'm here in Gona for help. Well, I'm also thanking for what I did for us. Um, I'm loving what I, what I ask. I, I ask on Scott. I ask on Mächtig. And uh, we will am danken for the Seligkeit that I have on the Jeff through Jesus Christus. We will be there for you know Dinge Ramans for for what in the world passiert. When there's Kriegstart by Israel and Ukraine and verschiedene Sejens. Can I on hold and send in your bed for for day dinga? We can a bed of is in field Christa day the canon existed so open top coma in China and and North Korea just at Saya Shwade day Christas and for falched they're persecuted and they muttered at Saya and secret top coma. We can be there for day. We can be there for us, for our country and the regierung, our prime minister, our premiers. There's also things that we have to be there for. And the familiars, it's a matter of feel to be there for. So we will, you just see, learn how to name it. I'm going to be there for. So for day, what, what can I? Well, once hand can I? I'm going to be there.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. for that song, Almost Persuaded, reminds me of uh, when Paul was speaking to one of the kings, was it Agrippa? And so Agrippa said that he was almost persuaded. And it's a reminder for us to not pull back, but to draw near and faith and trust in the Lord, and especially those that haven't come to that point, we would do that. So we're talking about the story of David and Goliath, and uh, the little guy facing the big guy, and how good wins in the end. And... Uh, how David has come to the battle, how David is willing to do what needs to be done, you know, even though his brothers are in the, in the army and he's just staying with the sheep. You know, we don't read anywhere that he's complaining. His dad calls him to go bring something to his brothers. He right away obeys and he's willing to do his part. So we're here in 1 Samuel 17, and uh, David comes, verse 20. And David arose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper. It's not interesting. The other references talks about how he is with the sheep. Now he gets to hand it off. He's going to leave the sheep with somebody else. Somebody else will look after the sheep. He's going to do other things. And he took and went as Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for battle. 
For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army, and David left his carriage where he left his stuff in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, and out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done? To the man that killeth the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. So David, he comes along, and uh, he sees the big guy, the big soldier, the giant, and he's asking, you know what? Why, why, is, why is everyone afraid? That's basically what he's saying. How come we're afraid of that guy? How come we're afraid? How come we're afraid? Isn't that the question for us too? You know, there's giants in our lives, things we face. And it can cause us, by nature, to be afraid. And it's natural. And yet, from David's example, we see the question, you know, why are we afraid? Um, I don't know, I don't have the verse in front of me, but remember when Jesus was in the, the boat with the disciples, and they were going across the sea. And uh, there's a storm. And the disciples are afraid. Remember the story? And they wake him up. You know, Master, we're drowning here. And uh, then he, he rebukes the storm. And then he basically asks, how come you're afraid? How come you're afraid? Isn't that the biggest thing? With the difficulties in life, it makes us afraid. I'm talking with a different gentleman recently, older as well, and he talked about it as well, you know, when he developed a type of cancer, and it made him a bit anxious and afraid. And as I spoke with him, or we were in a group talking, and I said, you know, wasn't, isn't it the unknown? And we don't know what's going to happen. You know, with, with something like cancer, we, if we don't know what's going to happen. That in itself can make us afraid. And I think, you know, once he found out, okay, well, he went for tests, and it was this and that, and that's a treatment, and okay, then he felt more at ease again. You know, there was something they could do. But very often it's a fear of the unknown that can make us afraid. And I think there we can just be reminded that yeah, we may not know, but is there someone who does know? Yes, the Lord knows. God knows. And we can bring those fears to him. We can bring those fears to the Lord. He knows what's going to happen, what our future holds. And he's not all worried. Is God worried? No, no, he's not worried. So we can trust him. We can trust him. He knows what's happening, and he's going to go with us. We're not alone. We're not alone. So David is questioning, basically, how come you're afraid? Why doesn't someone do something? Verse 28, 
And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? With whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Look at that. His brother is not encouraging him. His own brother is speaking against him. He's putting him down. You know, what are you doing here anyways? You should be back home with the sheep. What are you doing here in the battle? This is for grown men here. You should be back there where the boys' work is. So he's putting him down. Why did he put him down? Probably a few reasons. I think he's, I think he was a little envious. You know, here David was so brave. And here the older brother was afraid of the giant. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe it was that he felt he was the oldest and he would be the one who would call the shots. Maybe that's it. Pride, maybe a bit of pride. But he was, he was putting down his brother. And that's a reality in life too, can be in church too, where or someone criticizes the next one. And even though they shouldn't, it happens at times. And how do we respond? How do you respond when we notice a Christian brother or sister kind of criticizing what we're doing? It's not easy. You know, our Christian brothers and sisters should be the ones supporting us, right? I'm not saying that they all criticize, but sometimes it happens. Now look at David's response. How did David respond to his brother? And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Isn't there a reason? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. So how did David respond? He just asked the question, you know, what's this about? And he kept on going. He kept on going. He didn't let his brother's comment cut him down, okay? He had a, he had a task that God was calling him to. He had this in his heart that this is what God wanted him to do, that he should stand up and do something. And he didn't let his brother's cut down his brother's remark um, stop his work. He kept on going. And that is very important. You know, we, we're in church here, and it's inevitable that someone might hurt someone else. That just happens because we're humans. You know, we maybe didn't intend to say something, or but sometimes it happens that someone makes a comment that hurts someone else. And very often what happens, a person stops coming to church or goes somewhere else or something like that. And, and, and just avoids the person. And, you know, that's not the response we, we want. I think we need to someone has mentioned to me, we need a bit of a thick skin, meaning that we don't get offended right away. We can't get offended right away when someone says something. Because, you know, it's bound to happen. And if we, every time someone says something that might offend us, we run away, you know, that can just bring anxiety in us, you know, if we just run from comments. We rather want to go on, we want to forgive, we need to forgive. And, you know, what the person said to us, sometimes we can, it kind of goes round and round in our head and we keep thinking about it and, and we don't know how to deal with it. But, you know, Jesus gave advice. What did he say? 
Sermon on the Mount, he talked about turning the other cheek, right? And what did he say? I don't have it open in front of me. But if you do something good to someone who does something bad to you, it helps. It's a witness, but also helps you to forgive is what I've found. When you do something good to someone who did something bad to you, it helps you to forgive the person. That's what I've found. So we need to keep on going, keep on serving, and not to give up. And that's what David did. He kept on. You know, yeah, his brother criticized him, but he didn't let that stop him. He kept on. He had this, this job God had given him to do, and he was going to go on. Verse 31. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed and they told Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Isn't that quite a, quite a response? Don't just take it easy. Don't get all riled up. We need those. We need people you and me, to say that in those hard times. You know, yeah, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. Let's keep trusting God. Let's keep going on. Those are David's words here. You know, let's let no man's heart fail. And I have another example. Of that. Example is in Genesis 50. I wanted to share that. In Genesis 50, part of um, Joseph's story. Remember Joseph? He had been sold by his brothers into slavery in Egypt. And, um, you know, his dad was mourning for him because he thought Joseph was dead. But eventually, Joseph became a leader of Egypt under, Potter, under Pharaoh. And then the family comes to Egypt, and they find out who Joseph is, and then they move there. But eventually, the, the, the father, Jacob, he dies. And uh, now the brothers are afraid. See, so we're here in Genesis 50. Just read from verse 15. And when Joseph's brethren saw their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and certainly requite us or repay us for all the evil we did to him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Their father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto the evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. You get the picture? The brothers are coming to Joseph and saying, you know what, Dad said you should forgive us. How did Joseph respond? He wept. Why did he weep? Why did Joseph weep? You know, he, he, he had forgiven them already. He had forgiven them. And now they're asking for forgiveness again. And he says, no, you don't need to worry. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, fear not, for am I in the presence of God? Am I God? No, I'm not. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. They were afraid that he was gonna take revenge on them. 
what did he do? He comforted them. He reminded them. You know, he had forgiven them. And we need that. We need people that are comforting, that are comforters. You know, when we see someone that is troubled, that we go and, and, and hear their story and encourage them. You know, that is, that is our job to do. You know, sometimes we might wonder, well, what, what will I say? What will I do? We're very often someone who needs comfort, just needs someone to listen to them. Just needs a listening ear. That is a big part. And just someone is going to listen to me or listen to you or listen to that person. And Joseph made a different comment here. He said to his brothers, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. You know, Joseph reminded them, look, something good came out of it. God had a plan through all of this. Something good is going to come out of it. And that is a good reminder for us too. We, we see troubles in life. We wonder, what good is this? Well, we don't always know what good there is. But God has a way of working things out for good. You know, there's that familiar verse. I'll look for it here. Romans 8.28. What does that say? Now we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Meaning that God has a plan, and whatever difficulty we're going through, God will work something out for good. You know, there'll be something. We don't always understand the reason. That's the thing. We don't always understand the reason. But that is where faith comes in, that we continue to trust. God is going to work something out. Continue to trust. So we're back here in 1 Samuel 17. So David is comforting. Here David is comforting Saul. 1 Samuel 17, verse 32, we were up to. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail. You know, don't worry. Let's not worry about this big giant. How's that? For comfort, big nine foot, almost 10 foot, big guy. Oh, let's not worry about him. Let's not worry about him. So David is saying, thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth. Oh, look at that. Of course, his brother was criticizing him, oh, you should be back by the sheep. And now Saul, he's, he's not criticizing, he's kind of questioning, are you sure? Look, this is such a big, big, big man. Look at his big muscles, look, look at the, his armor, how heavy it is, and how are you gonna penetrate that coat of mail, the coat of chains? How are you gonna do it? He's raising doubts. How are you going to do this? is what Saul is asking. And isn't that the same thing we sometimes face? There's a task that needs to be done, and we say, well, I can't do that. I'm not experienced enough. I can't sing well enough. I can't this, I can't that. And we come up with all kinds of excuses. Isn't that our nature? And we can't let that slow us down, you know. I just think of, you know, I've been a youth leader for a number of years and so often felt that I wasn't competent enough, that, you know, I didn't have what it took. And yet I continued anyways, this was, this was the role I was in and God provided strength. God gave strength. And even today, you know, still, when I get ready for a Sunday message and I, I don't feel competent, I feel, oh, what am I all going to say? 
and I don't feel able. And yet, you know, we step forward and God provides. And that is what David was doing. Saul was questioning him. Oh, you won't be able to, how are you going to do this? And he said, well, look, look, look in the past, you know. Here, verse, uh, where is that? Verse 34, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Isn't that a picture? His bear is against him. He catches the bear by his beard, or the lion by his beard, and he, he kills the lion and the bear. <clears throat> but what is he doing? He is looking into his past experiences. Look how God has helped me, has helped us in the past. God has helped us in the past. And he was using that as a reminder that God will help us in the future. That's what David was doing. A very wise young man. A very wise young man. And so it is for us. Let's remind ourselves of how God has led us in the past and take courage that God will continue to lead us. Verse 36, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Go, and the Lord be with thee. Doesn't that sound like a good benediction? I mean, that's so far we'll go. That is my encouragement for us this morning. And you know the rest of the story. You know how David, he fought Goliath, and he won, and it was not in his own strength, but God's strength. And so we can continue on as well. Continue trusting, continue holding on to the one who leads us. That is the Lord Jesus. So let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who continues to lead us even as you have led us in the past. We thank you for how you led David in this story, in this account. How there was a big giant he needed to face and how you equipped him to do what needed to be done. So guide us as well, Lord, as we face our giants, we could say, as we face our challenges, our difficulties in life, Remind us of how you have helped us in the past and that you will continue to guide us and help us in the future, even as you have helped us in the past. Help us to conquer those fears, to bring them to you, and not to let them overpower us. Give us the confidence of David. Give us the confidence from you. We thank you for the encouragement that you gave Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled, as he told us. So help us to continue to trust you. So guide us as we face the giants, as we face the difficulties. We pray for those with health situations, that you would give us strength and healing in your way and your time. We pray for those that are discouraged, perhaps depressed, that you might Lift us out of those situations, helping us to hold on to you. We pray for those that are grieving the loss of a loved one. Lord, that your comforting hand might be over us and carry us through those times. We pray for our church that we have here in New Bothwell and just pray your blessing on us here. We may grow together in one, in unity, and that you might add members as you see fit. Guide us in serving you at home. Guide us in serving you at school or at work, wherever that might be, especially when we face giants that we might 
go on and not give up. And when we perhaps feel critiqued by a brother or a sister like David was, that we don't let that knock us down, but that we let it run off like water off a duck's back, as they say, knowing that those are bound to happen, that people will make comments. And we don't need to be thrown down each time. Help us to find strength in you, knowing that you're the one that leads us on. I pray for our world situations where there's wars and fightings in the Israel area and the Ukraine area and so many other places that you might just work in those situations, work out your will. You might bring about peace in your way, in your time, especially in light of end time prophecies. We know that there's much, much there and we just leave it all in your hands. I pray for our government leaders, our prime minister, that you continue to work in his heart, that he might seek you and your leading and how he runs this country. We pray for our premier as well, that you might guide him, that he might seek you as well. So many other leaders we have in our, in our country, in our province, in our municipality, our, our towns, our cities. Guide us with our schools. I know as well how the government is you know, there's so much being pushed there, gender confusion and all that, that you might just guide our children in, in finding their identity in you. But they don't need to be confused, but they know who they are in you. So guide us, Lord, I thank you for your leading with this message. And we just pray your blessing as we go. We pray in Jesus' name. At this time, we again would like to go to the Lord in prayer. And for those that are able, let's kneel for prayer.
Good morning. I put a special thank you to the people of uh, uh, Rudy Dietbrach, who uh, have a shoulder operation have, and that all the luck yet. So, from the people of the doctors, who have luck had them out, who have seen the con. And also for the brother in Paraguay, we have a lot of things that have been stroke, and they did better, so we have a bit of a hold of my family. And we have for the people who have on the here for Lord, we wait it out to my as Hara Pirahus for Martin Dick. So can we figure Chana, but for the for me, so better. It's wichtig that we damn get in bed, you thank you what to a three return. But that says that we met three return at the end. And I will time and say that the as an union bulletin, so I'm the prepared of the the Umi Chuck as an altona, so we don't all a time to loot to come. And then so that you don't make it in the third weekend and more, then we have the membership meeting then in Altona, the Kings of Marines. And for a matter of what mission, then for the mission, and no matter what for the private show, what upcoming will be there now, to make it prune what. And then the third weekend and more, then as the Sunday School Teachers Workshop, so we can talk to us more, the dark show in the Mufka can see you. I'd like to thank each one for coming to church this morning. Venshint Gottes Segen and Bistand. And well done, Schlüter, mit der Benediction. We find it here in Numbers chapter 6. Der Herr segne dich und behüte dich. Der Herr lasse sein Angesicht leuchten über dir und sei dir gnädig. Der Herr hebe sein Angesicht über dir und gebe dir Frieden. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. And so go in peace with the Lord. <laughs>